Hi, welcome to the Micro Jig Shop. My name is Morgan, and today we're going to be looking at the Blade Clean Blade and Bit Cleaning System. A clean carbide edge is essential to cut quality. When your blades and bits seem like they're not cutting as well as they used to, odds are they're not dull, they're dirty. Unnecessarily sharpening blades will affect the kerf and reduce their overall lifespan. Not to mention it's expensive and takes time away from your projects. The Blade Clean System makes quick work of cleaning saw blades and router bits without the use of harsh chemicals. As with any product, first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that everything is in the package and free of damage. So, let's get into it. Alright, cool. So, this is the Blade Clean. You got your manual right here. Warranty registration, fill that out. A custom designed heavy duty mandrel. Six aluminum oxide cleaning discs that you'll be using to clean router bits. You'll see the Blade Clean pad in the bottom of the main well. At the center of the well is a post to keep your saw blade centered and prevent it from scraping the sides of the well. You'll notice the bottom of the well is raised around the outer edge so that the majority of the contact between the blade and the blade clean pad is on the carbide teeth, not the body of the blade. You can clean blades between seven and a quarter inch diameter for compact circular saws, up to 12 inches in diameter for larger table saws and chop saws. This locking lid comes off and this is a router bit holder. So you stick your router bits in there for cleaning them and soaking them in this well here. Here's my favorite part. Here's the magnetic handle. This is for safe handling of blades. Um, seriously, it makes it really easy. And then a gold fashioned wire brush. All right, so good. All the parts and pieces are here. Let's go ahead and go over what you need to start cleaning some saw blades. Blade clean system, obviously, already got that. Next, you're going to want either one big towel or two small towels. Um, I've got two small towels today. What that's for is for setting your blade down so that it doesn't damage the carbide, um, but also you can wrap it up and flip it over and then put it back in the cleaning well. Some kind of general purpose liquid household cleaner like Simple Green or Fabuloso or Pine Sol or you know, whatever you got lying around. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy and the good thing is this is not corrosive. A two quart or larger liquid container. Technically you only need one solo cup, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put all these out here so that you can see what kind of mixture I'm doing. So I do a three to one mixture, uh, three cups of water and one cup of the cleaning solution. That's all gonna go in here, and then that's gonna go into the blade clean. A rotary tool or an electric drill, latex or nitrile gloves, and protective eyewear. Step one, prepare your cleaning solution. To fill both the saw blade well and the router bit well, you'll need about two quarts or 64 ounces of diluted cleaning solution. Today I'm using a three to one mixture of Simple Green HD and regular old tap water. That's three parts water and one part cleaner. You'll want to wear gloves and protective eyewear for this in case any splashing occurs. Once you have your cleaning solution mixed, pour it into the router bit well and fill it up to the fill line. Close up the router bit well, remove the main lid, and pour the remainder into the saw blade well. You really only need enough in there to cover the top of the scouring pad, but you can fill it all the way up to the fill line if you want. Step two, remove the saw blade. Raise your blade to its highest point and remove the arbor nut and flange. Use the included magnetic handle to remove the blade from the saw, then place the blade on the towel. We're gonna reposition the handle so that it sits right over the center of the blade. Don't try to pull the handle straight up. These magnets are pretty strong and you'd have to hold the blade down with the other hand. The easy way to do it is to just twist it to the side and then it comes right up. Twist it and you're good. Now you can center it over the blade and that's about right. With your handle in position, take this bad boy, place the blade in the saw blade well with the center post through the hole in the middle of the blade. Pay attention to the direction of the blade's teeth. So if the blade was spinning clockwise to make a cut, rotate it counterclockwise when you're cleaning it. You're going to want to apply just a little bit of downward pressure as you rotate the blade about a half turn in the opposite direction of the blade's teeth. So then you can pull it out and inspect and make sure that you know you got everything off and that you're happy with how clean the one side is. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to drop my towel down here. And I can flip it over. And that keeps something between the sharp teeth of the blade and my fingertips. Um, I don't like handling the blades without anything uh, in between us. So now we're ready to do this side. Put your handle in there and drop it back in. 
Now last time you'll notice that I spun the blade this way because that was the opposite rotation of the blade. Since I flipped it over, now I need to spin it the opposite direction. Take it out, inspect it, make sure that you're happy with how clean it is, that you got everything off, and that looks pretty dang good to me. So, I'm going to dry it off. And put it back on the saw. Now it's time to clean some router bits. When you remove the small lid at the center of the main lid, you'll see that the underside has a foam piece with two different size holes. The smaller holes are for holding quarter inch and eight millimeter shank router bits, and the larger holes are for half inch and 12 millimeter shanks. They don't need to go all the way in. You want to make sure that the cutting edge of the bit is down far enough so that it'll actually soak in your solution. If you're cleaning a router bit that has a bearing on it, make sure to remove that bearing before dropping it in the solution. A lot of these household cleaners have degreaser in them and it would just dry your bearing out. It wouldn't really work the same. I like to do this before cleaning my saw blades so that they're soaking while I'm cleaning saw blades. Insert the included mandrel into the rotary tool or an electric drill. Set your rotary tool or electric drill to between 8 and 12,000 RPMs and gently go over the cutting edges of your bit to remove the pitch. When you're using the edge of the scouring disc to get into a tight space, run the edge of the disc along the cutting edge, not perpendicular to it. Remember these things are sharp and having the disc rotate into the sharp cutting edge will wear it out pretty quickly and the friction could actually dull your bit. And so knowing that mine spins this way, if I'm cleaning something like a chisel, I don't want to go at it like this because, because it's spinning this way, it would be going into the sharp cutting edge. So you want to move away from the cutting edge. Good technique will help these discs last longer, but eventually they'll need to be replaced. Replacement discs come in packs of 14, including an extra mandrel, and they're available at microjig.com slash blade clean. The discs are also great for cleaning other metal tools in your shop or restoring old hardware. Now when you're done cleaning the router bits, make sure that you don't leave them in the router bit well because this is a solution with a majority of its water. Uh, obviously you don't want to leave metal parts in water. They will rust. So put that lid back on there, dry these bad boys up and you're good to go. And store it away for later use. You don't have to mix or pour anything for a very long time. All right, that's about all I have for you today. Remember, keep those blades clean. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.